Hey, I'm Meredith, one of the pulmonary fellows, and today we're going to talk about pneumothorax versus atelectasis. So how are they different? So one way they're different is the cause. Another is basically the imaging and how you diagnose. Um, and lastly, the management is different. So really in every way, and we're going to talk about those ways now. All right, so cause. So pneumothorax literally means air in the thorax, air in the chest. So you have this potential space, right, between your visceral pleura and your parietal pleura. And so something's got to make a hole, right? So pop a hole such that that space fills up with air, okay? So I like to think about it in two ways, outside in, so that sort of like a stab wound can cause that, um, versus inside only, like if a bleb were to pop. All right, and so you've got to remember from your basic physiology lectures the pressure. So you've got atmospheric pressure in your lung. Obviously, atmospheric pressure is outside, okay? Um, but when you create this hole, this stab wound, for example, or this bleb popping, the pressure inside the chest becomes atmospheric too. And remember, it's supposed to be that negative pleural pressure. So the lung wants to collapse down and the chest wall wants to go out. So you're going to end up with two scenarios, um, and this is a very important distinction, okay? So I want you to take a look at the picture uh, on the left of your screen first and then the right. So at the left of the screen, you just have guard variety pneumothorax, but on the right-hand side of the screen, you have what is known as a tension pneumothorax, and this, like I said, is a very important distinction. So in your regular pneumothorax, what you've got going on is essentially a two-way valve, right? So any air that goes in is also going to come out, okay? So everybody's just hanging out at atmospheric pressure, all right? Lungs happy, diaphragm's happy. It's essentially okay. However, in a tension pneumothorax, it's a one-way valve. So air is going to come in from the outside, but it's not going to be able to go back out for whatever reason. And this can get really dangerous because that just means you get increased pressure and increased pressure and increased pressure inside the chest such that it's going to push over your mediastinum and it can actually uh, cause the heart to have issues pumping blood. So a tension pneumothorax is an emergency and you see it on TV all the time. And what do they do? They pop a tube in or they pop in a needle, right, to create that valve such that the air can exit, all right? So that's something that you can do in this case when you're treating these patients. So disclaimer, I know I said that the lung's going to be happy and the chest wall is going to be happy. Remember, the lung wants to be small. The chest wall wants to go out. However, this doesn't make the patient so happy. When the lung is small, it's collapsed. The oxygenation's not going to be great. When the chest wall is going to be pushed out, that's going to cause the patient significant pain. So just wanted to clarify that right here. So now let's move on to the cause of atelectasis. So what atelectasis really means um, is incomplete expansion, essentially, okay? So an incomplete expansion of the lung is what you're gonna be thinking about. So again, I like to think about this outside in. So outside in, obesity, right? Because you can't uh, move your belly out of the way. Chest wall disease, like scoliosis. Um, and a pleural effusion, so fluid in that pleural space. Inside only, um, things like a mucus plug, something in that airway. Um, malignancy, a cancer in the airway. Or um, a foreign body, like if a kid aspirates a piece of corn or something like that. So there's my drawing, my little pleural effusion. It's going to put pressure going in. That's that wall, obesity. And then there's your mucus plug there. They're all going to want to make the lung collapse. So basically, there's no hole. It's just everything's pushing up on that lung or it's blocking air from getting in such that it squishes down and it gets smaller. All right, so now we've seen it in cartoons. But what does this look like in real life? Here's a pneumothorax. The air is the big black area, okay? And the lung is actually the small shriveled little thing right there. And then if you notice that the mediastinum is being sort of pushed away because there's a 
increase in pressure on that side. All right, this chest x-ray is atelectasis. It looks almost opposite. Instead of all black where there's air, this is gonna be completely white, no air, probably from a mucus plug or something. And here, the mediastinum goes in that direction toward the side of the atelectasis because there's a decreased volume because all of that lung is squished up. So lastly, this is just a picture of what we call bilateral atelectasis, meaning it's happening on both sides. It's probably from sort of a diaphragm weakness, or you could see this in obesity as well. I just wanted to show you this picture to see that they have small lung fields. The mediastinum stays in the middle because it's symmetric. All right, so lastly, what do we do? So in a pneumothorax, there's a couple of things. Number one, you could just monitor just watch them, see what happens. Two, um, you can try to give more oxygen, and that's sort of a different discussion on the theory why that works. Um, and three, like we talked about earlier, you can put a chest tube in. All right, so for atelectasis, um, it kind of depends what's going on, right? So if it's a plug, um, you gotta get, get it out, right? Get rid of the plug. Um, and on the other hand, if it is a chest wall issue or obesity or something, essentially compression, um, pleural effusion, or the patient's not taking big enough breaths because of pain, for example, then you need to relieve that compression. So whether it's taking out fluid of the effusion or giving pain medicine or losing weight even or things like that, okay? Um Getting out a plug, well, some people could just cough it out. That would be the easiest. Um, and then you could also do a bronchoscopy, uh, which is a procedure where we can kind of clean out the airways. All right, so in summary, a couple quick points. One, these are both collapsed lung. That is true and important to remember. But two, the causes are different, and that is an important distinction. Three, because of this, they behave differently. So you've got to remember that. And four, because of this, then you're going to treat them differently. So that's very important to remember as well. That's all I got. I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to email me at mkgreer at emory.edu. Thanks for watching.